Hi, my name is Frederik Möllers. I'm from Saarland University in Germany, and I'm going to present my paper on energy efficient dummy traffic generation in home automation systems. So for the overview, I'm going to start off with a short motivation. I'm going to then introduce the problem model that was actually published before, but just to get everyone on the same page here. I'm going to then present our uh, research into concentrate dummy traffic, um, which means generating traffic at the at a constant rate, introducing dummies where needed. Um, and then I'm going to introduce uh, my own approach, naive exponential dummies, which aims to strike a compromise between privacy and energy efficiency. And then I'm going to finish the talk with a short conclusion. So to start with the current situation, we can see a steep increase in the presence of home automation systems in houses and apartments. Um, the, those systems are getting more and more common. They are getting cheaper. The hardware is getting cheaper and more and more people start to install such systems to increase the comfort of living, to save energy, uh, or even to, to increase the security. Um, the problem with this is that uh, many of those systems are built to be as cheap as possible. And of course, uh, with this comes come a lot of security and privacy issues. There have been headlines where home automation systems have been so insecure that burglars could uh, misuse them to gain access to the houses and so on. Previous research has also shown that um, these systems often introduce uh, severe privacy issues, for example, um, we have shown uh, in a past paper that one could eavesdrop on the communication in a household or uh, on the communication uh, from a home automation system. And here, for example, in the graph, we could reconstruct the temperature values that were measured in a room, which gives us information about the heating and ventilation behavior, uh, habits of the user living there. Um, previous research has also shown that uh, wired systems are almost as susceptible to these attacks as wireless systems um, by placing small listening devices on the walls people could or attackers could eavesdrop on the communication over wires um, so using wired systems does not protect uh, the user completely from these attacks okay on to the main matter of the paper uh, we assume the following attack scenario. We have a passive eavesdropper who does not inject traffic into the system, who does not compromise devices, but who just listens passively to the communication that is being received and transmitted by the system itself. Um, the attacker has strong reception, so they are able to capture all traffic that is uh, sent and received. Um, they are not able to break any encryption uh, whatsoever. Um, and the goal is to identify user interaction, so to determine whether a user is currently interacting with the system or not. So to formalize this, we assume that the attacker observes traffic samples. So uh, what they get is a list of, for example, timestamps, which may be annotated with any information that the attacker is able to see. Uh, for example, uh, wireless channel information, maybe uh, addressing metadata, whatever they might be able to see. Um, the goal of the attacker is uh, to decide whether a user is interacting uh, with the system. So uh, to formalize this, uh, we want to quantify the probability of the occurrence of a um, particular traffic sample. Um, we assume that the user is given the choice between uh, two tasks, A and B, which may of course be possibly empty. Um, the user has to perform one of the tasks. The attacker then um, captures the output of the system in terms of uh, traffic samples. And then the attacker has to decide whether the user performed task A or task B. Um, an intuitive special case of this is, for example, uh, task A is the user interacts with the system by pressing a light switch versus task B. The user does not interact with the system at all during the given time frame. Uh, the attacker then captures the traffic of the system. Um, for example, an empty observation over a period of a minute. And then, uh, of course, in this case, the attacker uh, is able to determine that the user did not perform the task uh, that uh, that where he would have interacted uh, with the light switch, but instead did not interact with the system at all. So in a previous work, we have uh, thus established the notion of epsilon delta private communication, 
which borrows concepts from uh, differential privacy and epsilon delta private information retrieval. We have an observation O, which is uh, basically a traffic sample, as I said. Um, for example, a list of timestamps, a list of inter-arrival times, so the difference between two subsequent timestamps, uh, possibly annotated with channel information whatsoever. Uh, we have two tasks, which are uh, of which one is performed by the user, <laughs> and uh, then we measure the probability of observing a particular traffic sample uh, in the one case or the other case. And we then state that a system offers epsilon delta private communication if this inequality holds, namely that the probability of observing a traffic pattern under the assumption that the user performs one task is less than or equal to e to the power of epsilon times the probability of observing the same traffic pattern under the assumption that the user performs the second task plus some delta. Um, Delta is uh, basically um, a constant information leakage that the system cannot cannot completely prevent, and uh, epsilon is an exponent to a factor by which the probabilities are um, higher. We have also defined special cases. For example, we have uh, or we state that a system offers epsilon delta indistinguishability. If this inequality holds for some finite fixed set of tasks, T, um, for example, this set might comprise tasks such as uh, pressing a light switch, um, unlocking a door, turning on the heating, and so on. Um, and if this inequality holds, this basically means that an attacker can only distinguish between these tasks um, with some limited confidence, uh, limited by the factors epsilon and delta. We have also defined epsilon delta unobservability, um, for which uh, the inequality, inequality must hold for a set of tasks T, where um, for each task in this set, the complementary task must also be included, which means that if a task T, such as uh, the user presses a light switch is included in the set, then the complementary task, um, meaning the user must not press a light switch during the given time frame, must also be included in the set. Uh, this basically means that if a system offers unobservability or epsilon delta unobservability for a set of tasks, then these tasks or uh, these interactions given by those tasks can only be um, inferred by the attacker with a limited probability or with a limited confidence, um, limited by the values epsilon and delta. Just to illustrate this, um, let's take a, um, a system that generates dummy messages and we take a particular traffic pattern that an attacker um, captures. Now, if this traffic pattern only occurs whenever the user interacts with the system in a specific way, then the probability of observing this, under the assumption that the user interacts with the system in this way, uh, this value determines the value of delta, because it only happens in one case and never in the other. Uh, on the other hand, if we have a sample that can be observed in both cases when the, uh, when the user interacts with the system or when uh, they do not interact with the system, um, then the ratio of these probabilities then determines the value of epsilon. This is why we call delta the constant privacy leakage. Now the first countermeasure that comes to mind is of course generating dummy traffic. And when generating dummy traffic, the easiest way to do this is to generate dummy traffic at a rate that completely fills all links. So that means we generate dummy traffic whenever we don't have any genuine information to send so that there we have a constant data rate on all links um, so that the attacker can never see whether there is genuine information being transmitted or whether it's only dummies. 
Now, given the definitions from before, we can rather easily prove that concentrate dummy traffic provides perfect epsilon delta private communication with epsilon and delta being zero. This is this provides perfect privacy because as it, uh, it's obvious to see that an attacker can never um, correctly or yeah can never decide whether a task A to or task B was performed based on a captured traffic sample, uh, the attacker can never perform better than randomly guessing. However, concentrate dummy traffic also has its downsides, namely that it completely fills all the links with traffic. Uh, we know from many anonymity networks, for example, that, that they refrain from using concentrate dummy traffic because of the traffic overhead it introduces. Um, and the main concern in home automation systems is, of course, energy efficiency. The more packets we transmit, the more energy the system consumes. And if it's a battery-powered system, which many uh, oh, that many um, wireless systems are, then this, of course, reduces the battery life, which means higher costs and higher um, inconvenience for the users who have to exchange the batteries more often. The question is now... Is this intuition actually true? So is constant rate dummy traffic actually infeasible in terms of energy consumption for home automation systems? And uh, to answer this question, we have performed uh, five different simulations using five different models. Uh, one model was established on uh, Wi-Fi hardware using regular uh, laptop hardware, measuring the um, energy consumption of that. Uh, then we have taken three specialized IoT devices um, with energy consumption measurements, uh, have performed the same simulation using that data. And uh, last but not least, we have performed our own measurements using uh, Homatic hardware, a popular home automation system, and have uh, performed a simulation using this data. The result of these simulations was quite surprising. We could see that, for example, in the Wi-Fi uh, hardware case, the energy consumption that is introduced or the additional energy consumption that is introduced by using constant rate dummy traffic is actually negligible because uh, the idle tr uh, power consumption of the system is so high that transmitting all those dummy packets doesn't even make a difference in terms of energy consumption or total energy consumption. Uh, for the other systems, um, there have been um, uh, varying results. Uh, the, for the specialized IoT hardware, the um, difference was quite significant. And using our own measurements, we have seen that uh, concentrate dummy traffic here might not make sense because uh, the energy consumption has uh, increased by a factor of um, 11 that means that the system uh, consumes um, 12 times as much power as it does when using no dummy traffic at all. Now, of course, in cases where constant rate dummy traffic is no option, we have to think of something else. And we came up with this um, approach named naive exponential dummies, where we say the system draws a random number from an exponential or geometrical, depending whether we're using a discrete timer or a continuous one, uh, from an exponential distribution after each message. And then it waits uh, for this amount of time. And if and only if no genuine mes message is uh, transmitted within this time, then at the end of the time frame, a dummy message is sent by the system. Um, this uh, parameter of the exponential or geometrical distribution allows uh, for tuning if energy efficiency versus privacy. If we, for example, increase the um, average or the, the mean of the uh, distribution, then fewer dummy messages are sent. So the time between two subsequent dummy messages increases, uh, which improves the energy efficiency, but of course, um, or as we'll see, um, decreases the privacy. Now, I won't bore you with any proofs in this talk, but in the paper you can read that um, we can prove that uh, NED or Naive Exponential Dummies does not provide epsilon delta private communication at all. It's impossible. Um, 
In general, we also do not have epsilon indistinguishability where delta um, is zero, um, but instead we have a value of delta larger than zero in the general case. Um, however, we can prove that for some cases, um, for example, for single tasks, uh, which only comprise of a single interaction, um, we can show that uh, net offers epsilon delta unobservability for these uh, tasks and their complements. Now the proofs are all nice, but the question remains, is net actually feasible to use in a real world system? And to answer this, we have performed three different measurements um, using the homatic model from before. Um, we have a simulated net uh, using real-world um, home automation system traffic uh, and we have calculated values of epsilon and delta and the resulting energy consumption increase ECI for those values. Um, the first case is where we have no dummy traffic. Now this might sound a bit counterintuitive but when you think about it if the attacker is not able to decrypt packets and is only able to see message timestamps then you might have an observation that can be observed uh, when the user performs some interaction, for example, pressing a light switch, but can also be observed when the system performs some automation rule, for example, turning on a light in the morning. Uh, now, the same observation being observed both when the user performs the interaction and when the system uh, follows some automation rule means that uh, this um, traffic pattern is not um, unique to this task, which means that uh, values of epsilon and delta actually make sense in this case too. And we have, we can, uh, or using this simulation, we could see that uh, using no dummy traffic, the value of epsilon is uh, in the range of seven to nine, and the value of delta is in the range of 0.7 to one, where one is the worst case, uh, namely that a given observation is so unique that the attacker can learn a definitive piece of information from this. We have then performed a simulation uh, where we um, set the value or set the parameter of the exponential distribution in a way that uh, approximately one packet was sent every two seconds. And there we could uh, immediately see that the value of epsilon decreased dr dramatically. It was lower than four in this case. Um, and the value of delta increased even more dramatically from uh, 0.7 to 1 um, down to a value of uh, less than two, uh, 2 to the power of minus 2. So uh, 0 0.01, less than that. Um, the energy consumption increase was moderate. Um, the system, uh, our one system consumed uh, about 20% more power than if no dummy traffic was used and one system where the um, difference was more significant the um, uh, energy consumption increased by 120 percent so um, it was a little more than double the energy consumption it uh, consumed in the case where no dummy traffic was used. We have then also performed a simulation using a rate of approximately one packet per second and this uh, decreased the value of epsilon to uh, less than 10 to the power of minus 10. Um, and delta decreased uh, to less than two times 10 to the power of minus three. So uh, as we can see, uh, when sending one dummy traffic, uh, dummy packet per second approximately, those two values uh, decreased dramatically. Um, the uh, energy consumption increase is still much, much less than when using concentrate dummy traffic, according to the different models. Um, but uh, the, the privacy um, parameters, epsilon and delta, decrease to a value where it's actually maintainable and offers um, reasonable privacy at moderate costs of energy. And with this, I would like to conclude my talk. We have seen uh, that uh, concentrate dummy traffic is not necessarily infeasible for some home automation systems, depending on the hardware used. For example, if the system uses uh, regular Wi-Fi hardware, then concentrate dummy traffic might actually be the way to go to uh, achieve perfect um, epsilon delta private communications or perfect privacy at moderate costs. 
And in other cases, a naive exponential dummies can provide tu a tunable compromise between privacy and energy efficiency and uh, other algorithms uh, that learn user behavior, try to adapt this, might even uh, provide better results using uh, less energy. Thank you.